Welcome to Coulter Holmes Inside World Pickleball Show, a weekly program featuring the sports lifestyle and action on and off the court of the fastest growing sport in America, pickleball. Hello, everybody. I'm Carl Foster. Welcome to this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. I'm Melissa McCurley. At the kickoff of the 2021 PPA Foot Solutions Arizona Grand Slam in Phoenix, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. Coming up on this week's show, our cover story goes back in time with some of the pickleball pro old guard. There's young people in it now, tennis players coming in, all sports, baseball players. So, you know, that's to me is the biggest change is just the tremendous growth. I can now go to tournaments and have to find it, find my OG versus they're just right there in front of me. Well, we all hope, of course, that, you know, we go uh, worldwide, which we are, uh, you know, about 26, 27 countries, I believe in. Um, and we want to, you know, we want to be an Olympic sport. Ben Johns and Simone Jargine dominate the PPA Phoenix kickoff event with triple golds. And Melissa McCurley recaps all the top winners. Keith Kovac is our player teacher profile as he transitions from tennis to the pickleball courts at Delray Beach. I also love that they've aligned line calling with tennis. All of those tennis players are coming over to pickleball and you know they've been calling lines that way for their you know entire tennis career hopefully and hopefully they'll continue to do so here. And we'll help improve your game with the engaged pickleball tip of the week from national champion Steve Kennedy. I don't care what you do in your pickleball life, I want you to try and play this game out in front of you. So put blinders on yourself, have them go out, and this is where ideally we'd like to play pickleball. All this as we ramp up for sold out Delray Beach Pickleball Open and Pickleball with Purpose charity events. All this and more to come on the Coulter Homes Inside World Pickleball Show. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking, your number one choice for home loans and high interest savings. And PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Shopping for a new home in Port St. Lucie? Start your search at pgavillageverano.com. Discover a resort-style community by Coulter Homes, featuring social and fitness clubhouses, award-winning homes and villas, championship golf next door, a 55-plus neighborhood, and South Florida's largest private pickleball center. See virtual tours and build your dream home online with interactive floor plans at pgavillageverano.com. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. In our cover story this week from Phoenix, Arizona at the PPA Tour kickoff event, Melissa McCurley catches up with some of the professional pioneers, the old guard as we call them, paving the way for where we are today with pickleball as the fastest growing sport in America. And I am here with Christine Barksdale. Christine has been around the game since 2010, so we kind of refer Christine to you a little bit as the old guard, the if OG. you will. The old OG. And so, Christine, what we want to talk to you a little bit about here today is what have you seen change the most in this explosion in growth in pickleball over the last 11 years? Wow, you want me to name one thing? No, several. OK, things. good. I get to name a few. You know, I've been in this sport 11 years. And when I first started, our brackets were, were much smaller. We knew everybody. You'd get to a tournament venue, you'd know everybody. Now I get here and I've got all players I don't know, brand new people in the sport. Just so, just tremendous growth and change. You know, back 10 years ago, you know, the people winning the national championships were 60. 
I, you know, but the sport, there's young people in it now, tennis players coming in, all sports, baseball players. So, you know, that's to me is the biggest change is just the tremendous growth. I can now go to tournaments and have to find it, find my OG versus they're just right there in front of me. Yeah. So, Christine, are you a competition player? I am. I am a senior pro. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Melissa. Um, but yeah, I'm a senior pro player. I started uh, not in the senior pros, but being having to play, you know, five or six years in that 45 to 50 range was tough. I looked forward to turning 50 for yeah, the first time in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And, and Christine has certainly been one of the top players in the country. She is competing here today in the mixed senior pro. So Christine, thank you for taking the time out of your bracket to come by and talk to us today. Absolutely. Thanks, Melissa, for running this, another amazing tournament that you run. All right. We'll look forward to seeing you at the next one. All right. I am here with Gigi Lemaster. Gigi is an 11-time national champion, six-time U.S. Open gold medalist. Gigi has been around the sport since 2010. Gigi, and you're playing today here in the senior mixed doubles uh, division, pro division. What can you tell us has changed the most about pickleball in the last 11 years? Oh, uh, Melissa, uh, I think athleticism. Uh, we have real athletes now. We used to just do it for fun and to grow the sport, but now, I mean, uh, look at here. Um, the athleticism, we have real athletes, uh, younger uh, people playing the sport. And uh, so uh, I think that's uh, the most important thing that's changed. We, we, you know, we're having a pro level, uh, amateurs. So we uh, tremendous growth. Um, but I think it um, definitely with the tennis players coming in and the young Younger people yeah. as a definitely a more attractive sport. So Gigi, you came into the game without a tennis background and you saw a lot of success in this game and still seeing success in this game. What makes you uh, be able to have that kind of success not coming in here with the tennis background? So I think I have, uh, what I have is uh, anticipation and uh, maybe uh, slowing down the game uh, is uh, something that I really work hard at and, uh, and just being consistent. Well, what do you see for yourself for pickleball over the next 11 years? Well, we all hope, of course, that, you know, we go uh, worldwide, which we are, uh, you know, about 26, 27 countries, I believe in. Um, and we want to, you know, we want to be an Olympic sport. Yeah. And Gigi, uh, you're from Belgium, so you certainly have done a lot to grow the pickleball uh, game internationally as well. Uh, so how would you say pickleball is doing over, uh, overseas today? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it has tremendous growth. Um, we, England, Denmark, Finland, you can name a, uh, name a country uh, in Northern Europe and they play pickleball. So uh, I'm really happy to see uh, the growth uh, of pickleball uh, in uh, you know, other countries than just the U.S. Oh, outstanding. Gigi, thank you for taking some time out of your competition today to talk to us. Folks, this is Gigi Lamaster, one of the legends of pickleball. So happy, Gigi, to talk with you today, and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Some of our other early professionals seeing the vision of their new sport and where it could go is still just scratching the surface like senior pro Steve Kennedy. You know, I do see a nice group of 18 to 25s. Um, you know, as prize money increases, you'll see a lot of the guys who maybe are playing and, and the ladies who are playing pro tennis recognizing, hey, they can step off that, that tennis court where they were great players but just couldn't make it and say, hey, pickleball is a chance for me to do, you know, much better at this game than I did at tennis. So as prize money comes, sponsorship becomes better. Um, you know, you're going to see the whole sport just continue to, to go bigger and bigger. And, you know, corporate sponsorship is more than happy to go with pickleball. Some other now veterans in this young sport, like Sarah Ansbury and Kyle Yates, continue to compete at a high level. Uh, we've, we've come such a long way in pro pickleball, which is great, but it, it, you know we're nowhere near you know, where we want to be in the future. We're nowhere near tennis or, or some of these sports that have been around a lot longer. And so, you know, um, a lot of my passion and what I feel is important to the growth of this sport is the education with kids. Uh, it's getting it back in schools. It's, you know, it, you know, years and years ago, they played pickleball a lot more in PEs and now it's starting to come back more. And, you know, we want to make it a university sport. Some of the colleges have made it a club sport. And so, you know, the goal is to get it to an NCAA sport. And then once we get there, that that's what's important with the growth internationally, you know, for us to get in the Olympics someday. So that's a big reason why I'm so involved with education is because without kids, Kids, we, we don't have a future. So pro's great, we're doing a great job and, and we're all enjoying the, the benefits of that. Uh, but we all kind of have to keep, keep trucking to make sure that we keep 
it keep growing, going up, and make sure we don't plateau uh, from that spectrum. And that's also, you know, a facility like this, when you have tennis over there, tennis over there, pickleball here, you know, golf over there, that's the future of the sport where we have, we, where um, clubs are putting pickleball courts in, where uh, you see people walking by and I want to try that sport. And that's the importance about facilities. As a pro now, you're getting endorsements. You're working with different paddle companies. You've got a clothing line. We've talked to PB19. You got your own line right there, uh, which is pretty cool. I've got some of the product myself, so that's got to be pretty good, you know, for the pros to see to get to that level where you're getting recognition from sponsors, and obviously it helps you guys when you have to travel and you get endorsements to to help uh, make a living. It's exciting. You know, growing up, I always wanted a professional athlete and didn't really know what sport I'd be able to do that in, and I think I found my niche. Um, so it's just exciting to see the sport growing, getting bigger and bigger, you know, getting on you know, TV hopefully soon, and uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun. We're on TV right now, we're Fox Sports National. This, we're going national with this show, so here you go. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> you know, what's the future for Kyle Gates? Now, is this something that's it's a full-time career? Some guys are, have other jobs, but do you see this sport with the prize money and the growth of two tours and other tournaments and so forth, where you can make a full-time living and this is where you want to be? I, I already do this full-time. Um, I, I really never expected to go too far with it. I just knew I loved pickleball, loved playing. Um, I was making it work, but nowadays, you know, there's a lot of opportunities with the business side, the pro side, teaching, a lot of opportunities popping up. So who knows where I'll be in a few years. I hope to still be competing at the highest level. I've been playing pro for about six years now, and, uh, and I just love it. It's just a way of life, so we'll see what happens. What age did you start playing? I started playing around 15 years old. I started playing pro when I turned probably 19. All right, so you got you got a long way to go. Yeah, you, you can play till you're in the seniors. <laughs>
Also this weekend, we had men's doubles pro. This was a 38 team draw where the brothers of Ben Johns and Colin Johns lost in the quarters to Spencer Smith and Tyler Lung, 11 9, 9 11, 11 6, going into the back draw, playing five matches on their climb back to gold, where we then saw a two hour final gold medal match. Went two hours, folks. This final was 11 7, 10 12, 15 13, 15 13. It was absolutely electrifying we saw what the heart of true champions really looked like And also in the men's singles pro draw, there were 34 men's players in this draw. Ben Johns going undefeated, but certainly not uncontested, as Jay Devalais took him to three games in the quarters, and Zane Navratil took him three games in the finals, with Ben winning 10-12, 11-3, 11-6. And here's another Jigsaw Health funny video. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm on the court, the crowd goes crazy because they love the sport. I just move my feet, hitting every shot because I can't be beat. Yeah. This is how I dig, throwing more at you than the kitchen sink. It's me, this is how I roll. And like Ben Johns, I got the flow. Yeah. It's pickleball cocktail. It's pickleball cocktail. It's pickleball cocktail. I, I don't cram. It's pickleball cocktail. It's pickleball cocktail. It's pickleball cocktail. I, I don't cram. When I step on the court, yeah. this is what I do. Okay. Everybody cramping, cause they ain't got that new. I got this cocktail in my glass, and I ain't afraid to drink it. Drink it, drink it, drink it. I pickle and I love it. Keith Kovac is our player-teacher profile as he transitions from tennis to the pickleball courts in Delray Beach. I'm happy to see that the guys governing the pickleball game of pickleball are keeping updated and staying busy with things that need to be done. The drop serve, I like it. As you know, they have made it a provisional rule. So they're looking closely at it. They're going to check for unintended consequences and see how it goes. I'm happy with it. Uh, the let rule, definitely, they have discovered some opportunity to affect the outcome of the game by improperly calling the let intentionally. And uh, the NCAA College Tennis adopted it years ago already uh, for the same reason. And uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, should be no problem. So I like it. Uh, I think uh, I'm happy to see the rules changes. And uh, being a longtime tennis professional moving into the pickleball scene, yep. what do you see in the biggest changes and the biggest challenges for people entering pickleball now? The biggest challenge locally for people entering pickleball, of course, is a lack of facilities. Uh, we've moved very slowly in the municipalities uh, of recognizing the huge amount of people playing pickleball and the demand. So now we've got places like the Delray Beach Tennis Center that are really packed on a daily basis. Uh, folks that are new coming into the game are struggling to break into those games because those other people are already experienced, already good players. So the new players are having, finding a little harder time uh, getting on the courts here and there. 
And they're talking about the integrity of the game with these rule changes. That's the goal. You know, try to keep uh, the, the cheating sometimes or the, the missed calls and so forth, you know, the illegal serves and playing out the lets and so forth. Do you think that's going to help the game move along? I think it will. And, and the fact that there's lots of people dedicated to seeing it happen successfully or not, including all of us pickleball aficionados, uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, um, I also love that they've aligned line calling with tennis. All of those tennis players are coming over to pickleball and you know they've been calling lines that way for their you know entire tennis career hopefully right. and hopefully they'll continue to do so here. Okay good luck and uh, get back out on the courts. Thank you very much sir. Thank you. Keith Kovac here at the Delray Beach Tennis Center. Discover the plus in 55-plus living at Crestwind Palm Beach. Located in Westlake, Florida's newest city, Crestwind Palm Beach is a fresh new home choice. Designed for the next generation, Crestwind Palm Beach is a 55-plus community for those who thrive on a happy, healthy life through fitness, nutrition, and relationships. Nine decorated models now open. To learn more about all the pluses Crestwind offers, visit CrestwindPalmBeach.com. That's CrestwindPalmBeach.com. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. It's time for the Engage Pickleball Tip of the Week with Senior Championship Pro Steve Kennedy. All right, guys, let's talk about the third shot drop back in. Again, I find in my teaching career here that people are obviously stronger to their forehand side third shot drop, but it's okay. If we get that back in, again, there's no panic situation here. It's going to be a real short backswing. The body's going to stay pretty much open. You see I've coiled up a little bit. I want to make sure that I'm coming from the underside of the ball. As you see, I'm isolating my shoulder here, guys, right? Paddle face is a little bit open under the ball. We talked about, about pocket height at contact point like we did on the forehand. I don't care what you do in your pickleball life. I want you to try and play this game out in front of you. So put blinders on yourself. Have them go out. And this is where ideally we'd like to play pickleball, forward of ourselves like this, okay? Now, that's a perfect world. It's not gonna happen all the time, but when I can make that happen, that's what's gonna make you a better player. That's where your leverage is, that's where your visual is, everything's forward, okay? So on the backhand third shot drop, if Lee was up a little bit, my friend Lee, you see where the paddle's gonna stay forward, guys? As the paddle's forward, nice little lift on that shot. Nice little lift. It's a very abbreviated backswing. It's nice and soft. Good. And I lift up on that ball, right? And it's soft. And again, guys, look at my left hand. I'm counterbalancing myself. Often I'll tell people when you hit it, wave to the crowd. All right? So it's a cool little tip that I like. Pretend there's more than Carl just watching here. And I got my hand up. And I can wave to the crowd over there. The paddle's forward. And it's nice and soft. I'm under and I'm lifting. Biggest mistake I see on third shot drops is way too big of a backswing and trying to hit a third shot drop when the ball's high or unbelievably low. All right, we've got to find that sweet spot in that shot. All right, pick the right times. Remember, whether it's a forehand third or a backhand third, it's paddle out. This is the line of demarcation. The paddle doesn't go behind my left foot here. If it did, it was too far. So it's from here, contact, lift, forehand. Line of demarcation, that's too far back already, that's enough. Contact, 
and the lift and the hold at the top. Big thing about third shot drops, forehand back in, is limit your backswing, find a pocket or lower, get under the ball, isolate the shoulder, follow through up and lift, and hold water at the top. Pickleball with Purpose is coming full circle as Fisher House is one of the charities with Andy Rubenstein in Plantation, Florida. Then we have the Thank You First Responder event coming up at the Delray Beach Pickleball Open. And that's this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. I'm Carl Foster with Melissa McCurley, Carpe Dinkum. And join us again next week as Simone Jargine hosts the Tampa Pro event in her backyard. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking, your number one choice for home loans and high interest savings. And PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida.